Good day everyone! Today we will be talking about the Philippine literature and one of its examples is the visitation of the gods together with my partner Wendy Seninu and yours truly Annika Lomo. But before we start, I would like to give an exercises so that we can re- you can refresh your mind. It's only an exercise, it's not an activity. I'll give the answer of these exercises after the discussion. You only need to fix the jumbled letters based on its given clue in relation to the lesson to be discussed. So now pick a piece of paper so that you can answer or you can write your answer on that piece of paper. Number one, upper stendenten. Number one, upper stendenten. A person who manages or superintends an organization or activity someone who is the top executive or CEO in the school district. So what is it? Number two, a tasser. Number two, a tasser. Someone whose occupation is to instruct. A one that teaches lessons especially in school. So now think of it carefully. Number three, a spy pisvar. Number three, a spy pisvar. A person who supervises a person or an activity. Someone who is in charge of a group of people or an area of work and who makes sure that the work is done. Think of it carefully. Are you done? So now we will proceed to the next number. Number four, Citaviant. Citaviant, an act of visiting or an instance of being visited for the purpose of inspection, examination, and or evaluation. Are you done thinking? Okay, we will proceed to the next number. Number five. Sagt. Sagt. The creator and ruler of the universe and source of all moral authority, a physical representation of a deity. So what is it? Congratulations! You've just finished the five items of the exercises. I'll provide the answer after the discussions. I hope you've got the perfect score. But for now, my partner, Wendy Sedeño, will start the lesson. Today, so, um, today we're going to, or uh, we'll be discussing about Philippine literature and one of its example, which is the visitation of the gods. So before I'll go ahead and proceed to one of the example of the Philippine literature, I'll go ahead and discuss first if what is Philippine literature. So Philippine literature is the literature associated with the Philippines, which includes the legends of prehistory and the colonial legacy of the Philippines. Um, it's very self-explanatory that when we say Philippine literature, this is a literature about Philippines or could be associated with the Philippines and it includes the legends or the brief story and the colonial legacy of the Philippines. It is unique for having important works in many languages, so we read a lot of literatures and um, already um, that is actually written in different languages. We have Spanish, English, Filipino, or Tagalog. We have or other Philippine languages or dialect. It focuses on the country's pre-colonial cultural traditions and the social political histories of its colonial and contemporary traditions. So now I've mentioned earlier that there will be one example of Philippine literature that we're going to discuss today. So that is the visitation of the gods, which is written by Gilda Cordero Fernando. Before we'll proceed to the main point of the story, let's discuss first if who is 
the dark white girl, Fernando. So, Gilda Cordero Fernando is a writer, a publisher from the Philippines. She was born on June 4, 1932 in Manila. She has two collections of short stories, which is The Butcher, The Baker, and The Candlestick Maker in 1962, and A Wilderness of Sweets on 1973. These books have been compiled and reissued as the story collection in 1994. Another book, There is a Philippine Food and Life, that was published in 1992 with Alfredo Rosas. Cordero Fernando also worked on Filipino heritage, a 10 volume study on Philippine history and culture published by Lahing Filipino in 1978. Afterwards, she founded GCF Books, which published a dozen titles that deal with various aspects of Philippine culture and society. She is also a visual artist, a fashion designer, a playwright, art creator, and producer. Back in February 2000, she produced Luna and S1 Romans. In 2001, she also produced a Pinoy pop culture, the book and the show for Bench. So now let's proceed to the elements of the story. The first element of the story is the characters of the Visitation of God. We have here Miss Santos, which is the PE instructor. We have here Mr. Don Rosario, which is a military tactics. We have here Leon, the student, Miss Noel, the English instructor, Mr. Sawat, the new English supervisor. We have here Mr. Alava, the superintendent, Mr. Albus, the Pugad Lounge principal. We have here Mrs. Albus, the wife of Mr. Albus. We have Mrs. Divina Gracia, the home economics instructor. We have Mr. Bruna Fuller, the industrial arts instructor. We have Mr. Didios, which is the physics instructor. We have Mr. Baz, the national language instructor. The other element of the short story is the setting. So, so the main or the setting of the story took place in Puga Blowing High School, rooted in a firm ledge of a hill. The schoolhouse was accessible by a series of stone steps, stone steps carved on the hard face of the rocks. Its west windows locked out in the misty grandeur of a mountain chain shaped like a sleeping woman. So um, the main place of the event was in the Pugad Lawin High School. The point of view of the story is third person point of view. The plot is plot structure. So let's proceed to the starting point of the story, which is the exposition. So on the story, there was a letter announcing the visitation, which is a yearly descent upon the school by the superintendent the district supervisors and the division supervisors for purposes of inspection and evaluation that had been delivered in the morning by a sleepy janitor to the principal. The party was he attached a circular revealed a hurried glance. Now at Takabuai would be in Mapili by lunchtime. In Mary, typhoons, floods, volcanic eruptions, and other acts of God would be upon Pugat Lawin by afternoon. The rising action is that the teacher stop and the student body had been divided into four working groups. The first group is composed of Mrs. Divina Gracia. We have as a home economics instructor. We have the teachers of group two had been assigned to procure the beddings and the dishes to be used for the supper. We have here the structure in the rooms that was the responsibility of the third group and the rudest freshman boys composed the third and discriminated group under the stewardship of Miss Noel. So 
next is conflict. The conflict happen when the schools tend to hide its imperfections, but they forget that visiting their school by God's will help those imperfections turn to perfect. So, ang mina ni nga God's is katong mga visitors nga mi add to sa school para bisitahon ang ilahang on sabi na hikuan sa ilang area karon if it's good or not. But, to silang pagbisita, di ba? Nagbuhat na ang mga, ang, uh, naka-receive man sila o ganap itong kanang message nga mo visit ang mga superintendents ito ay mga higher nga nagkuan sa school district especially sa kanang mga school sa public school so di ba nangandam na kasi sila ato nga time so dadto na dadto na ka nahita bo on conflict nga gihide sa mga teachers dadto nga ato nga school ang imperfections nila which is nag show off na on sila gipakita nila nga well off ang ilang school it's very well said that in provinces, there are poor education and lack of teachers. So whenever there will be a visitor, they bring out their best or show off in other words. So that, 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 that's what I mean. Actually guys, na experience ko ni during my elementary days, kay, if na gani may kanang mga, kanang highest form of kanang teachers nga mo visit sa among school ang amo ning principal ang mga teachers like mataranta dayon sila magandam dayon sila hinloon ang school every classroom must be clean dayon ang among surrounding also kanang full bitaw mi og kanang panghinlo ay then dapat new ang mga pintal mga ana bitaw siya naka nakakuan ang mga classroom like hinloan siya sa tanan din then during food classes, gipadloan na mi nga unsa among buhaton if umusulod ang visitor, i-greet na mo sila tas if pangutaan on mi nila unsa pagbasa ani, ipangtudloan na mi nila mga unsa ang mga words para daw dili sila maulawan if mangutan na ang visitors. So kanang so kani siya nga situation makarelate kay ko ani niya. So I guess no mga amot lang sa inyo ko na experience mo which kaya ako naka-experience man ko during elementary ani. So I think kani nga story is really reflected as Filipinos. And as time passed, students inherited these practices. So instead of learning from and trying a new practices, they just do it over and over again. So sa ako pong na-observe, no? Like, katong nga situation, like sa ako na-experience, mura po siya na natural na bitaw sa ako ang a, ah, basta na visitor, dapat manghinlo mi, dapat kabalo mi, dapat mungguan mi ug ayo, ano bitaw. So more katong nga practices, I believe jud tinuod jud siya nga na, nahimo na siya natong mental practices during nga naay visitors atong school or sa among school sa una. It would seem that the only way a person can climb the bureaucratic ladder is to allow himself to be eaten by the system. So as we observe na sa situation sa mga teachers because nga naa sa naay visitors so gi group into a theme sila sa ilahang principal nga tay tigluto na tig kanang hinlo tig kuan sa ilang school then also gi assignan po silang task ng kani ilang buhaton during the situation so so mga teachers po because ila tong principal ilang gi follow even though dili na to ilang job dili na to ilang kay teachers na sila so they, they should teach they should compromise a situation if they if they lack of facility lack of kanang unsa may mga pakita po sa school so the purpose of visitation diba is to know unsa problem or unsa may mga kinahanglan nga ipangbag-o para to improve the school dayon good people in the government are usually punished for doing their jobs while bad people are rewarded for doing things other than their jobs so Observe the vowel na kayo siya sa situation sa story, no? So, maagi siya yung reflection na to towards sa situation na kasagala mga in anijud. Next is climax. The visitation turns out well. But then, when the night came, Mr. Sawit, the new English supervisor, asked Miss Noel about the evaluation. Frankly, Miss Noel said that it seems all the visitation were a farce or funny play because the assessment were like scripted. So, kanin si Ms. Tuwell, o saan siya sa ka-teacher dito sa school? So, she realized kung unsa kabati ang system nila. So, when the supervisors a- I ask her, so, she kanang answer it honestly. So, ano siya nga kanang, katulad ko nga visit nila is 
it's like a scripted na kay they all already know a month ago so napangandanan nila ang ilang pag-visit so wala na sa wala na sila kakita kung unsa kabati ang ilang school sa una so nga ang katong mga gamit ay mga mga gamit nila like palitan kung na computer na laboratory room or any other form of educational nga need i use wala kayo nila gigamit para lang para lang if na visitation bago lang gyapon siya lang tawon so ana siya nga kanang kwan dito kanang kanang scripted na ilang visit because gipangandanan na silang principal nga aron nice aron nindot ang surrounding aron nindot ang reviews nga makita sa mga kanang nagvisit sa ilaha it gives the school administrators to a pro- opportunity to prepare and hide the infirmities of their respective school. So, mga ito akong istorya ganina, di ba? Nga, napangandanan na sa minang school kung unsa man ang mga makita na ito nga bati sa ilaha. The results are usually not reflective of the true status and situation of the schools because only the good things are highlighted while the bad things are hidden. So, because no, ito nga pang hitabo, napangandangan na nila, imbis na, imbis na ko nung no, mapakita kung unsa may mga problema sa mga sadyante o sa may mga lack nila dito, if lack ba sila sa facilities or lack ba sila sa things na need for the education, wala na pakita because this, the school is kanang gi-provide nila nga kanang na, okay ba ito kaayos sila nga walay problema sa ilang school. The whole activity boils down to making an impression and satisfying a group of assessors who are treated like gods by flattery and gift giving. Kay kani magot ko situation, di ba nakabantay mo atong gigrupo-grupo sa principal ang mga teachers para mapangandaman nila. So, na group of teachers na naitiglato, na pa group of teachers na tighinlo, na pa group of teachers na tig-welcome, na na group of teachers na mo ay of mga gift dito sa mga high nga tawo like ato mga supervisors of, or mga superintendent kani visit dito sa ilaha. Nga tagaan nila mga gift na Grabe kayo sila ka-welcome ato nga visitors. So, gipakita. Wala kayo nila gipakita kung unsa natin bati sa ilang schools. Falling action. Miss Noel realized that those who sacrifice and dedicate their lives for the good of the country usually end up getting nothing and having nothing. It seems that all those years, she have been slave of the administration. In the end, it's always the children who will suffer as she looks to the eyes of Leon, who is very willing to become a lawyer someday. So, mo ni ang mga nahitabo nga, dad to na nila realize ni Miss Noel, nga mo to, yan na istorya, because, sa iha na ko nang pag-serve, na na-realize niya, na himo na siyang slaves, atong administration. Then, paglantaw niya sa sulod sa classroom, nakita ni si, niya si Leon, one of his, her students nga, dedicated ki sa life, para mahimong lawyer. So, nakaingan siya, what if, what if ka lang, kung sakto lang dyan ang administration, makaprovide me o good quality of education sa students. So, that's why she came into an action para lang, so, para, para makuha niya nga ang student deserve a good or better education. So, that's it. Inangita siya way para master ay ma-release ma- niya kung unsa ang mga unsa mga situation nga dapat tanawon or dapat tagaag solution sa mga ni-visit sa ilaha. Because she realized na katong our visitation is eh, a kanang na purpose. It should have a purpose for the good, for the good, for the good or for the development of their school. And that's it. Next is resolution. At the end of the story, Miss Noel's determination to teach students still in his, still in her heart. She knows that there's a lot of factors that the teachers can give to their students. So, dali nga, sa resolution na dali nang napakita nga kung unsa ka good nga teacher si Miss Noel. And so, after breakfast the next morning, the supervisors packed their belongings and were soon ready. Mr. Binaflor fetched a camera and they all posed on the sand steps for a souvenir photo. So, mga tayo na itabo, paninga na itabo, is palakaw na ang kanang mga visitors after ato unta. So, ang nahitabo ani, the superintendent with Mr. and Mrs. Albes on either on either side of him and the minor gods in descending on the home economic stairs. So, while nagbaklay na sila ang mga visitor on, and also ang katong with with co-workers ni Miss Noel, ay Miss Noel, kanang nagdali-dali si Miss Noel, even though lit na siya, ni, ni add to siya, midagan siya, 
with up pride and humility on the lowest rung of the skull's hierarchy, gusto niya ma-change ang kanang sistema nga way nga gibuhat sa ilang school. Unsa man jud ang dapat nga solution nga ilang himuon. So, gusto niya ma-change ang system nga dapat dili na iyon ato because she believe nga dapat na ay changes. Dapat na ay good quality of education nga they should provide sa ilang sa iyang student. So, mauto ang nahitabo nga resolution sa story. So, the theme of the story is that the Filipino's mentality towards competition. The story also exposes the Filipino's mentality towards competition. Sometimes one pursuit for personal and professional growth can be mistaken a threat to another man's job or authority. More likely, it would be interpreted as showing off. It's like good people in the government are usually punished for doing their jobs while bad people are rewarded for doing things other than their jobs. Next is moral of the story. The story shows how difficult in sustaining one's interest in improving the standards of education in the country, especially in the public schools, because in the end, it is always the learners who will suffer. So, tinuod kini siya, maodyo ni siya ang pinaka-moral story sa pinaka-moral lesson of the story. Because, sa ako lang po experience ha, nga, sa elementary ko, high school, grabe good. Lack of facility, good grabe. Like, dili ni ka ng dili may complete og computer like kanang lesson jud bitaw din i observe pud also no nga nami computers na mga bag-o nga given gikan sa national or sa education nga department or sa edep-ed pero dili gyud siya paggamit sa among principal kay nga dali na daw maguba so nakana ko sa una nga asa purpose ato ang computer nga wa jud ka gamit like ma- ikatuloro jud ko na kadto sa computer room namo para mo gamit the rest is, maadto lang ko sa gawas para dito magbuhat o mga school works. And the other is, it doesn't matter how well one teaches, but how well one has learned. And also, stay determined to fight for the greater good for all. So, that's all the moral of the story. So, that's it. We're done. You need to answer these five questions to assess if you really understand the story. Number one is, who is the main character in the visitation of the gods? Number two, what was the first group assigned to visitation of gods? Number three, the visitation of the gods is written by? Number four, where is the setting of the story? Number five, what is your own reaction to such a visitation? Good luck for answering. These are the correct answers of the exercises. I hope you got the perfect score. Congratulations. Thank you, guys.